Well, friends, um, this is to try and wrap up the gun control debate. But um, it was difficult because I basically, if you can think of a scenario where people should have guns, people shouldn't have guns, people shouldn't have a certain type of gun, people need a certain type of gun, you can literally find a real life example of whether to do it or not, um, both sides of the argument, and I was bouncing off the walls like a squash ball. Walls like a squash ball. Yeah, I, I meant to say that. And it was it was doing me nothing. And again, and I think I said this in the last video, I can't remember, but um, it, it's best to admit when a problem's above you and beyond you. Um, I did find out some interesting things. Um, What's very interesting is three of the countries where it is easiest to purchase a firearm are also three of the most law-abiding and safe countries in the world. Uh, wrote it down actually. Um, uh, Sweden, Switzerland and Norway. They all like guns and they're all very safe. Mind you, they're all very small and very rich. And the taxes, and the taxes would make Bill Gates faint. But... Um, yeah, uh, so this would obviously imply that if you have a, a problem with, with gun ownership in your problem, which is the fact that people who own guns are shooting people, that there's more going on and maybe you should be looking at something apart from the guns to solve the problem. That being said, it doesn't mean you don't look at the guns and then, then the rabbit hole opens up before you. I see a rabbit hole a lot, don't I? Yeah. And it, it just, it just, um, it defeated me, to be honest. Uh, I mean, the, the, country, the countries of really high crime didn't have high gun ownership, but I don't know if that was legal gun ownership or illegal gun ownership, and do they really... I mean, you know, Pablo Escobar, did he... Did he really license all of those, you know, automatic weapons you saw in narco? Maybe he's not. It's, um, it did make you think about, like, well, owning weapons. I mean, one of the, one of the examples I was thinking of is, like, you can, I could, if I had a pile of guns in front of me, nothing ever would go awry because... You know, I'm I'm not really. I don't really fancy lighting up the tea room on a, on an afternoon with a you know pump action. It's um, it's most people aren't. It's I think the statistic was it's only two percent of the population are really that comfortable with killing people, and only one percent of them are bastards. As in, like half of them, not one percent of the two percent. Uh, after a statistic I got from some tele program years ago, and whether that's changed or that was accurate is relevant. There's the main the main problem is is just trying to keep that lot from having guns. This obviously then you've got to look around and say what about like places like you know which have civil unrest and ethnic cleansing. How do you control guns in that situation? You can you can only really look at at uh, countries which are basically at peace and have no civil unrest. Then it it start, then it just goes do bloody tat. I mean, kind of, for for instance, um, quite a few years ago there was a fella who was in the navy and he was on a submarine, I believe, and. They required everybody to perform a watch on the top of the submarine. I don't know if they call it the deck. I know they call the front the pointy bit. A bloke told us who was in the Navy. But um, he, he refused to do this because he refused to handle a weapon. Which probably makes you wonder at his choice of career. It did me. But he, he tried all sorts of uh, appeals to get out of doing this. And then they said, no, you've got to do it. And you, you know, do as you're told, as a military would. Sent him up, gave him the weapon. Uh, 
it would have been a an S A eighty or a descendant thereof. And the next thing you knew, we shot four people. Now, this is tragic and terrible, and obviously he got prison. I, I don't quite know what happened to him. Nothing pleasant, I hope. But at the end of the day, can you imagine using that as an argument to take all rifles away from the military? I mean, we'll be invaded by the end of the week. And that's just an example of how complicated it gets. But then... I knew a fella who was all in the army and he wanted his birthday off and they wouldn't give him leave so he just took sick and said he was depressed. And then when he came back, they would only give him a wooden rifle to use and plastic cutlery when he went to the when he went to the refectory. Purely purely I mean partly it was because he said he was depressed and it was within the rules and they wanted to make sure he didn't hurt himself or others and partly I think it was just a fuck with him because he obviously knew he was like yeah he was on a dodge so this is this is what you look at this the so yeah I mean it it would be incredibly arrogant and the height of hubris for me to sit here and just rattle off a, a, a list of things I think the governments of the world should do to um, sort out their problems or, or to acknowledge that something isn't a problem but it's just it's not going to fly it, it would just make me look like a tit and I don't need any help with that so that's all I can really say on the subject I mean yes gu guns are a great responsibility they should not be easy to get but that just mean that doesn't mean this should be inaccessible, does it? Uh, a lot of my friends have said there is no reason for a civilian to own a firearm. And then, of course, you can easily find exceptions. Farmers, as I've said before, um, there was a lady, wheelchair bound. She was raped uh, in her flat. Somebody broke in. This is in America, by the way. Somebody broke in. She couldn't run away, she couldn't She couldn't do anything and she just had to lie there and take it in her words. And she felt that if she had a firearm to hand, like a pistol or something she could keep in her bedside cabinet, that she might have fared better. And I'm not going to say if she would or wouldn't. Certainly, um, certainly, certainly I don't think she could have fared worse. If she had one, unless it's like she ricocheted and hit her or something, I don't know. You know, you know what I mean. And you, you've got to take that into consideration. But if you do something to make one person safe, who's to say it makes one person less safe? And that there begins the debate. If you introduce rules that I believe it's Australia where where you are allowed to own a pistol for self-defense but you've got to prove that you're in danger before you can get the pistol and so you've got to go around and just say you know my ex-husband's been sniffing a rune and I think he's going to do as a mischief okay a pet can you just prove that or oh, he has some funny texts all right we'll let you have a handgun a little bit more involved than that perhaps but you get the idea and don't quote us on that I read that years ago I'm just just saying it is, it is a really deep subject and again I didn't, I didn't enter in this with any sort of illusion that I was going to solve the world's problems and like you know maybe throw a parade for us or anybody that was going to listen. It was purely a mental exercise and it sort of did the job there in that I've learnt a lot of stuff that I didn't know before the exercise. And I've had a little think and a little threat. And a few new opinions. And like I think I said this just before, it, it boils down to responsibility. And I think it's a good marker that it, if you can trust a group of people with a firearm, and I'm not saying you should give them one at this point, but it's a, it's a good benchmark for... For how much, how 
how much respect you have for a group of people or a person if you would trust them with a firearm because they say would you trust that guy with your life and you say yeah I've known him for years he's the right one I love him and but uh, but then you can you say would you trust you would you give that man a loaded gun you could say that as well would you give that group of men loaded guns and I says well these three over here are right, but that one what a bastard you know and then by and large would you say is this country fit to have is this country fit to have lenient fire firearm purchasing laws? And apparently the likes of Sweden, Switzerland and Norway do. Now, I can probably hear on the groan and across the wind the, the faint scream of what about America? Well, you're on your own there. I... Yeah, what about America? This is a quick edit. Um, I can't sit here and understand America. I, I've been a few times. I've met many Americans. I've liked most of them. I don't understand the I don't understand the psychology of gun ownership over there. It's it's very polarized, like in many places, but like a lot of stuff, uber polarized. You're either dead for or dead against. There's probably people in the middle, but they tend to keep that themselves. I think mostly it's because of this incredible polarization that there's is so much evidence to go either way on any type of gun in America. You you know fine well that if you if you Google search anything to do with this, I would literally have to put the name of another country in. If I didn't want like the first page of me my search engine to be filled up with um, American stuff. Um But yes, I, it, it highlights the point. I, I, um, I've had to redo this bit a couple of times um, purely because it, it does illustrate my first example of you can find arguments, existing arguments, not theoretical ones, for and against the ownership of all kinds of guns purely in the United States of America. Um, the... Um, like the AR-15, a lot of people I know would say, I can't think of a single reason why you need an AR-15, but then I know people use them to hunt them, like Godzilla pigs you get down in the south. And as I say, you don't really want to just depend on one bullet, so what, they're going to have a fucking Barrett or something, like a tank. And then, then you go down the rabbit hole of what licenses and who should have this, and it it, it it goes silly. I can't concisely sum that up in the the three and a half minutes I've got to finish this video. Um, I think the best I can do is to tell people how you would consider it, as in, uh, it was. It sounds silly, but it was a Star Trek episode. It was like Captain Picard was striding up and doing his office and somebody justified something with uh, statistics statistics and Picard I've always I, I never could articulate this as well but he just turned around again and he said no I refuse to justify this with arithmetic and that is the best thing I can say to gun violence just just because something might be different in like one country that has more guns or less guns it doesn't mean that you should use look at a little sum they've done over there like they've got less guns and more murders that don't mean you justify it for not looking at any problems you've got in your own country and that's the best way i could think of it and i'm sorry to leave this such a loose end i feel like i've uh, i feel like i've copped out a bit but um i hope if it comes to a Another like minor issue people have had that they can they'll be able to pull something out of this video and use that on it. And with that I shall leave you till the next video and I hope you've enjoyed it.